Well, welcome once again, folks. I'm happy to be here with you. We're going to uh, get into what lesson was learned by 1844, by this great disappointment, by this time when William Miller and the early Adventists realized Jesus wasn't coming in 1844. Something else was happened. Out of that disappointment, a movement was born that has gotten larger and larger and larger. And you and I, I'm happy to say, are a part of that movement today. But let's see what we can learn from our past history and what they learned from history before them as well. Uh, so let's bow our heads and get started. Father in heaven, I want to ask that you would bless us today. We thank you for giving us lessons today from your word and also from the pen of inspiration. We ask that you will bless us, send your Holy Spirit to guide as we spend time today. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so uh, we're going to begin here on page 110 of our little book, Christ in His Sanctuary. The experience of the disciples who preached the gospel of the kingdom at the first advent of Christ had its counterpart in the experience of those who proclaimed the message of his second advent. Did you hear that? They both experienced the same things. Uh, as the disciples went out preaching, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. So Miller and his associates claim, proclaimed that the longest and last prophetic uh, period brought to view in the Bible was about to expire and that judgment was at hand and that everlasting kingdom was to be ushered in. The preaching of the disciples in regard to time were based on the 70 weeks of Daniel 9. The message given by Miller and his associates announced the termination of the 2300 days of Daniel 8.14, of which the 70 weeks form a part. The preaching of each was based upon the fulfillment of a different portion of the same great prophetic period. Now, I hope as a Adventist, if you are one and you're tuning in, you understand what we mean about this great timeline. We've probably, if we close our eyes, we can see all the little circles along the timeline, the little half circles showing the 490, the 69 weeks, the cutoff in the middle of the week, and the crosses there, and all these different periods. Uh, it's it's amazing to really draw it all up and, and look it over, but that's what we're discussing here when we're told that they were both preaching a portion of the same great prophetic uh, time chart. Like the first disciples, William Miller and Associates did not fully comprehend the import of the message which they bore. Errors that had long been established in the church prevented them from arriving at a correct interpretation of an important point of the prophecy. Therefore, Though they proclaimed the message which God had committed to them to be given to the world, yet through a misapprehension of its meaning, they suffered disappointment. So they had the time right, they had uh, some of the parts right, and they proclaimed a message that needed to be proclaimed, the urgency of Jesus soon coming, the very same message you and I need to present today. However, they were greatly disappointed because they erred simply in what that event was that was going to happen on October 22, 1844. In explaining Daniel 814 under 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Miller has been stated, adopted that as has been stated, adopted the generally received view that the earth is the sanctuary and he believed that the cleansing of the sanctuary represented the purification of earth by fire at the coming of the Lord. When, therefore, he found that the close of the 2300 days was definitely foretold, he concluded that this revealed the time of the second advent. His error resulted from accepting the popular view as to what constitutes the sanctuary. You see how one point steeped in tradition, steeped in our deep-seated beliefs, can keep us from growing into more light that God would have us to know and understand. I would encourage you today, take the Bible at his word, take God at his word, and if his word contradicts some something you have been taught for your entire life, something that you believe beyond a shadow of a doubt to be true because it was told to your parents and to your parents' parents and then to you, 
you must let go of that tradition, that that way of thinking, and allow the Bible to teach and instruct and seek to understand what the Bible is teaching, not insert what we already think into the Bible and try to make the Bible fit that. That's where Miller went wrong without even knowing what he was doing. He just accepted that this earth was the sanctuary and God was going to cleanse it by showing up and taking us home. A wonderful message, but a little bit off. In the typical system, which was a shadow of the sacrifice and priesthood of Christ, the cleansing of the sanctuary was the last service performed by the high priest in the yearly round of ministration. It was the closing work of the atonement, a removal or putting away of sin from Israel. It prefigured the closing work in the ministration of our high priest in heaven, in the removal or blotting out of sins, his people which are registered in the heavenly records. This service involved the work of investigation, a work of judgment, and immediately precedes the coming of Christ in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. For when he comes, every case has been decided. Jesus said, my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Revelation 22, verse 12. It is this work of judgment immediately preceding the second advent that is announced in the first angel's message, Revelation 14, 7, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. Those who proclaimed this warning gave the right message at the right time. But as the early disciples declared, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand, based on the prophecy of Daniel 9, while they failed to perceive the death of the Messiah was foretold in the same scripture, so William Miller and his associates pre preached the message based on Daniel 8 to 14 and Revelation 14, 7, and failed to see that they that there were still other messages brought into view in Revelation 14, which were also to be given before the advent of the Lord. As the disciples were mistaken in regard to the kingdom to be set up at the end of the 70 weeks, so Adventists were mistaken in regard to the event to take place at the expiration of the 2300 days. In both cases, there was an acquaintance of, or rather an adherence to popular errors that blinded the mind to truth. Both classes fulfilled the will of God in delivering the message which he desired to be given, and both through their own misapprehension of their message suffered disappointment. You see, brothers and sisters, we need to be so careful with the popular preconceived notions and ideas that we have held dear. We need to cling to the Bible and the Bible only, put away preconceived notions, preconceived ideas. I'm continually asking each and every one of you, myself included, to spend more time in God's word, to Feast on his word morning, noon, and night to commit it to memory throughout the day to learn to abide in him always. But if we're going to do this properly, let's not be disheartened or be preaching something that isn't quite correct simply because tradition denotes that that must be right and somehow the Bible has to follow it. Let's let the Bible interpret itself as we do our daily reading. And the Lord will bless and we will be a blessing to everyone we come in contact with. I want to read just a little further. Yet God accomplished his own beneficent purpose in permitting the warning of the judgment to be given just as it was. The great day was at hand, and in his providence the people were brought to the test a definite time in order to reveal to them what was in their hearts. The message was designed for the testing and purification of the church. They were to be led to see whether their affections were set upon the world or set upon Christ in heaven. They professed to love the Savior. Now they were to prove their love. Were they ready to renounce their worldly hopes and ambitions and welcome with joy the advent of the Lord? The message was designed to enable them to discern their spiritual state. It was sent in mercy to arouse them to seek the Lord with repentance and humility. Now, I want to make a statement here today. We're sitting in the middle of COVID. Unprecedented times, something we've never seen before. Is God trying to get you and I to begin to recognize that that time of probation could be drawing to a close? We're dealing with things the world has never seen. We're facing problems we've never faced. Is God trying to do the same things he did for the disciples? The same things he did for the early Adventists during the disappointment? Is he trying to direct you and I to do some 
some deep soul searching, some digging into our own hearts, making sure that we know Jesus, that we are seeking him while he may be found, that we are studying to show ourselves approved, not of this world and its popular ideas, but of heaven and of what God would have us do. I will repeat what I do so often. Abide in him and let him abide in you and you will bear good fruit. Fix your mind on things above, not on the things of this world. Keep your eyes firmly planted on the promised land and don't look to the left or the right at the distractions of what the devil is doing down here on this old world. Let's pray. Father in heaven, teach us today. We have clear understanding of the disappointment of the disciples, of the disappointment of the early Adventists, and Lord, may we today learn from these experiences. May we learn that we need to just study your word, put some of our preconceived ideas aside if they're contradicting what the Bible seems to be teaching and ask you to be our instructor. Lord, we thank you for the gift of prophecy and how it sheds light on the Bible. But may we also remember that we are to put the Bible and the Bible only first as our rule of faith and everything else secondary to that. We ask now that you will lead and guide and direct as we finish out this week. And Lord, may we be a blessing to anyone we come in contact with as much as we can during COVID. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, blessings and have a wonderful rest of your evening.